What I'll be doing is going through what they call the Microsoft Copilot in Business Central. How many people use Business Central? All of us as a group use Business Central in some sort of formal way, either accountant, payables, receivables, etc. So what we're going to be doing first is looking at what the Copilot does in Business Central. There's over 30,000 small medium businesses using Business Central. That's a lot of people. And within that, there's a lot of you know, different languages, automated tasks, etc. But what we're trying to do is look at what type of processes currently are available with Microsoft Copilot in Australia. Currently, what we'll be looking at is your bank reconciliation first. Then from there, we'll go on to looking at your suggest lines, analyzing lists, marketing text. What's that? Okay, well, we'll work on that one in a minute, but we'll see how we go with those. So what we've got here is a little couple of snippets just to give you a bit of a teaser on what we're going to be doing. I'm going to put a picture in and it's going to give me a, a bit of a marketing text by click of a button. Pretty cool. So actually analyzes the picture and it brings it across. Looking at the, your bank reconciliation. And then what we'll do is we'll go into looking at your suggest lines, how we can actually improve that process of creating your sales invoices quite quickly, copying for information from a someone emailing a piece of information to create the um, invoice for us. And then finally, I left the one really exciting part to this is to build your own reports in the customer ledger entries. I've only used the customer ledger entries, but you can do general ledger entries, vendor ledger entries, any ledger entries in the system, or even lists, pages, etc. But I'm just going to uh, demonstrate that. So let's go on to the real stuff. And I'm going to share my screen this time. Going into the real stuff called Business Central. Alrighty. So the first one I'm going to show is the what they call the bank reconciliation. So on a bank card, it looks like a normal bank card. We can go there and we can see our amounts, etc. But with the bank reconciliation, um, under your financial management and bank rec, you've got this button here. Who's seen that button before? Everyone has, but they don't know how to use it. So what this does, it allows us to, to click onto this button. It knows I'm picking up the check account, or I can change that to whatever one I need. But at the moment, because I'm saying I want it to do a check, I want to import my data for my check account. Import that. I just select my file and press OK. And once I do that, I click on generate. So it's already told me the statement date is the 31st of January 2024 and the statement number 25. And I'll just generate that now. It's matched two lines out of the nine entries. So I'm just going to show you what it's done. It's matched this line here. It's picked up its $360 and it's auto matched it for me without even me doing any extra work. So I'm just going to go back and say, yep, I'm happy to keep that information and, and say yes. Now I'm starting my bank rec. I've still got other entries in the system, right? And I want to now bring them, normally you'll come over here and you go, I want to highlight these entries and transfer them to a journal. Don't worry about that. There's another button. It's got these little star buttons. Who's actually used that before? I'm not sure how many people will be using Copilot yet. But what we can do here is we can post the difference to General Ledger. By clicking on that one button, now AI is going through the system, looking at my chart of accounts and trying to match the GLs to these. Because this is the first time I'm doing this, I need to then predefine it. Sometimes it finds it, sometimes it doesn't. At this moment, it hasn't found any GL accounts. And if I look at these entries here, that one's just a payment. That one's going to a rent. Oh, this is rent and this is a reversal of a rent. That's okay, we'll just put these to the rent income. Uh, rent income for that one and I'll do the same for this one here. Okay. And I've managed those two. I want to keep those two and I just want to keep the other ones as what they are and oh, let's choose the interest. And we can say accrued interest. No, it's going to be uh, interest on bank and so forth. I'm just going to keep those for now. So now what it's done, we don't have to go to a journal and post it. It's done the automatic posting for me. 
And it's also matched it all up nicely for me over here and left those two outstanding ones there. Um, once I'm finished, I'll just reconcile this bank and you're all done. The second one is we're going to do a sales invoice. Then we click on new here. And I'm just going to select a customer. And we'll select this guy here. Now, people go and say, uh, what did these guys purchase last time? All right, so with that said, over here I've got this little button called Suggest My Sales Lines. The one I'm going to be doing here is this little button, which gives me a prompt guide. I'm going to copy a last order. I can copy from my last invoice, or I can copy from my last Invoice, so from an invoice number or from my last invoice. All I just do is click onto that. I can type that in there if I wanted to or use my prompts to bring that information across. And once I hit the generate button, the system now is going into the, the invoices, looking at my last invoice and then bringing up the order. And all of a sudden I've got all my orders in a couple of seconds. If I want to change any of these quantities, I can or I can go insert. And that's happened there. Now, what I'm going to do is go to one of the little more scripts that I've actually written. And I'm going to say copy from a posted invoice. Same order, but I want to copy from a specific posted invoice. It may relate to this customer, it may not relate to this customer, but I'm going to click on generate and look at what it comes back through. And now it's brought those values. It's quite quick, click on insert. The third um, process on this is, um, we got an email come through. I'm gonna open my email account. I'll just move that across there. If we, it's gonna fire up on my left hand side here again. And I've got an email from a guy named Sammy Pincus who wants to order some stock. So I'm going to create another order whilst that happens there. Select my customer. Sammy Pincus is not here at the moment, but we'll just select another uh, person. Try. And Sammy himself has actually provided me An order. Okay, so Sammy wants to buy five five London chairs, 13 Berlin chairs, and three pedestals. I'm just going to copy that and go back into my uh, suggest lines, co-pilot, and paste it there. That's all I'm doing, just pasting it straight into there, and it's going to click on generate and what the system's now doing is looking at those items, searching the item list in the item cards and we'll bring those values across. And within a couple of seconds, you'll see it, what I've put and you can see over here, that's all I've ordered. And this is what it's come back with. And once I hit the insert button, it's going to insert those records on the sales order. That's the sales invoice process. I've shown you three different ways of actually creating different um, methodologies. You could also go into your prompts and you can have a bit of a play with this at the same time if you'd like to. And you can... Um, do your different type of processes. So you can add different items, you could do all that sort of stuff there. So you've got other ways of looking at description quantity, um, item descriptions, and you can push that through, add an item and look at the external document number or whatever. So that's how what you could utilize through the um, Copilot sales lines. The next interesting one, which uh, I'm just gonna move on to the next part to this because we're running out of a bit of time here, um, is the go to the item list. All 
Okay, come on. All right, Tim's. Okay, generally everyone goes over here and clicks this new button. And they can create the new item from a new little button, right? And by doing that, you're just really doing everything manually and you're picking up either a template or so forth. But I'm going to make it more interesting for you guys. I'm going to come out of there for a second. Sorry. Click on new, new from picture. Over here, I'm going to just select my picture. I'm going to do an office chair first, and then what I'll do is I'll pick up another item and we'll see a, another item being selected. Now, it's analysing the picture. It's coming up and saying, oh, it's a chair, because my category identifies as a chair. What colour chair is it? I'm colourblind. I'm going to say it's blue. Okay, I know it's black, but I'm going to call it blue. And then we're going to say, what the dimensions? What's the depth? 100 centimetres. Height is 350 centimetres. And the width is, I'm going to say 80 centimetres. It's a pretty skinny chair. All I'm going to then do is press OK. And it's now created my item with a couple of things just from one picture. Now, it's created my text. Everything's nice in there, but now we want some marketing text. On my left hand side here, there's a thing called Draft with Copilot. It's now generating, analyzing the item, it's looking at the chair, and now it's writing my script out for me without me even doing anything. Marketing department is going to be um, sitting in the background after this. Um, it's written all this. Two things that's, you know, like I haven't done, I haven't typed anything out. I can even change the way it, it's tone. I can come and say, I want to do a casual tone, upbeat, creative. Let's see what an upbeat tone looks like. And just regenerate. I, I will go through the process and now it's sitting in upbeat version. Okay. I get you a bit of um, about that. Now, you've got other ways you can format this, you could do a paragraph, you know, at the moment it's a tagline paragraph, you can change it just to a paragraph or brief. So you've got other options as well within this process. So I'm just going to keep that there for now and just hit that key button. Now that's already put it in my little marketing text box. We can edit it if we wanted to and so forth. Next, I'm going to create the same process but with a different picture. So this time I'm going to select a new picture. And in my new picture, it's a bowl with all these cutleries. And in the system, it just doesn't have the bowl. It's got another thing called a table. It's recognized this here as a table. So for me, that's pretty cool. How big is the table? What color is the table? Ah, it's orange. It's, you know, 150 centimeters deep. Height is one meter, and description we can call it, um, you know, large table. Okay, so then I'll just press OK, and our item has been created with just a couple of processes in place. It adds in the table category, it comes over here, puts it as a retail, looks at the GST posting groups, everything, and applies everything for me. It hasn't put the amounts or cost in, that's a little bit extra work that you need to do. Again, when we, if we're going to be marketing this, how are we going to market this particular table now? And by just hitting that little button, draft the co-pilot, and it's just going to come here and write my little blurb out by just one little click of a button. So the other one I've got is a final piece, which everyone's going to be excited about. <laughs> How long does it take you to write a report in Business Central for a customer ledger entry? I'm just going to go straight to my customer ledger entries. Two and a half hours. I was just helping you, George. Oh, thanks, mate. 
I'm just going to go back to my list view. Once it wants to create new. OK, so that's my list view. I've got my customer categories here and or and I want to really analyze what what how much values in a pivot table that I've got here. Uh, my system's going go slow. Alrighty. So we've got this little button again. We're going to analyze this list. And with this list set, we've got these little again, we can click on over here. We can add different structures. So we can go group by salesperson, show, or create a pivot table based on a salesperson. But let's do this create a pivot table by customer group. A couple of words. And then you can say um, highest. I'm just putting a couple of extra things in there. Surely it's not that simple, George. Why? Why can't it be that simple? That just looks too easy. Oh, OK. Uh, it's just best to put them out. OK, I'll just put them out in myself manually. How long did that take me? Is summer way, less, way less than two and a half hours. And that's all my invoices below it. Now, people are going to say, how can I bring this out to Excel? So I'm just going to hold all, all, all these lines. Right click, export to Excel. And it's brought it in exactly how it is on the screen in Excel, but not as a pivot table, but the data. Oh, that's pretty cool. What has it done here? It's grouped everything for me on my left hand side here. Look at this. It's sort of getting everything, all the information ready. It's grouped it for me, so I can come over here and look at my groups. Summarized it and it's up here. It's got another group. I can go one or two. And I just pissed the export out. That's all I did. Okay. Um, the other one is pretty cool on this is I'm going to keep that now because I really like that. I'm going to create another pivot table. I'm going to say, I'm just going to copy this little, well, not that one, George. Can't do that. I'm just trying to copy my right inside here, copy this feature, and paste it over here again. Again, you can say, show average cost per customer group. And these are just little basic reports that you can do and process and thing. And if you don't like it, you can discard it or you can keep it. And there's another simple report that you've actually created throughout the system. And you can also expand on how many orders are medium, small, and large. And you get to the number on how many um, there are there, right? At the bottom here, you've got the number of rows and filters on here. So you've got the total. That's my total amount. So there's two examples. That what you can do within Business Central on how quickly they can be recreated. Hey, if you you know interested to know how Peter can help you with your AI journey, um, developing your use case, right? What is where do we want to target AI in the first place? Um, designing the right technology components. Is it the out of the box co-pilots? Is it a bit of the Azure Open AI? Making sure your data and your platforms are suitable to connect in and work with AI. Um, that responsible AI planning, the, the sort of stuff, and then deploying solutions and providing training and support around it.